Good afternoon. Good to see you again. It's Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. We just have a few announcements to take today. Um, first announcement is uh, we would request prayers for Terry Thornton, who is having surgery in Dubuque today. Um, we ask that you remember him and his family in your prayers. Uh, Terry's been dealing with some ongoing health issues for a very long time, and I know he would covet your prayers. So please remember Terry in your prayers. Also, um, I've been asked um, by a number of people, when do we think we'll be worshiping in our congregations again? And the latest figures that I can see, um, and listening to those who have good insight into these things, I think we probably won't be worshiping in our congregations at least until the middle of May. Um, perhaps even as far as the 1st of June. Um, now that may change, uh, and I hope it does change, but I can't promise you um, that we'll be worshiping in our congregation, certainly not before the 1st of May, and perhaps not even into the middle of May or even to the end of the month. So we will continue to do what we can do. We will continue to hold worship services through the internet, I'll try and keep you up to date on things from day to day so that you have accurate information and that um, we can together work through this time of pandemic so that when the time does come for us to get back together again, we can certainly enjoy and rejoice in the celebrations. I think those are the announcements I want to touch on for today. I want to read um, a passage from... Um, 1 Corinthians, this is chapter 15, where St. Paul is writing to the Christians of Corinth. Now I would remind you, beloved, in what terms I preached to you the gospel, which you received, in which you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold it fast, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brethren at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God which is in me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preached, and so you believed." These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. Amen. St. Paul is responsible for almost a third of the New Testament. We have a variety of letters from Paul, from deep theological letters like Romans and Galatians, pastoral letters like the Corinthian correspondence, and personal letters like Paul's writings to Timothy. All of them drawing us deeper into the faith that has grown up out of the resurrection of Jesus. Paul, who at first opposed Jesus, opposed the church, sought to destroy the church by a miracle on the Damascus Road. What he sought to destroy would soon become the very thing he would live for and ultimately sacrifice his life for, for the gospel, for the good news of Jesus Christ raised from the dead. And that's what the church has been doing for the last 2,000 years, proclaiming that resurrection, proclaiming that good news, doing it through the ways that are familiar to us, and sometimes in ways that aren't familiar to us, but speak the word of God in such a way that it touches hearts and minds, and so draws them to Christ. The challenge we always have is to discern what new way is the way that's going to help us proclaim the gospel and what new way is going to get in the way of the gospel. And that's not something an individual is entitled to do. That's a responsibility for the whole church. 
to look at the witness that we bring to the world and ask of ourselves simple questions. First and foremost, does it point to the death and resurrection of Jesus? Or as Luther says, does it preach Christ? Does it preach Christ crucified and risen from the dead? That is the first measure that we always take with anything that we do in the church. If it points to Jesus, then it is something that can be a blessing to us. If it points anywhere else, no matter how good and useful that might be, we need to consider deeply whether or not this is a helpful thing. Secondly, we want to ask ourselves, is it in keeping with the tradition of the church, with the faith handed to us by the apostles? Because we don't invent the church each generation. We inherit the church. We inherit the traditions of the church. They are the things that the church has witnessed to, has worshipped with, has proclaimed throughout its history. Many of the things that you and I take for granted in worship and in the witness of our church, untold thousands of martyrs sacrificed their lives so that that good news, that witness, could go forward. And so we want to hold fast to that which we know is true and tested and trusted, that has come down to us from the ancient church and is still as much alive and as useful today as it was the day it was first proclaimed. And the third thing we want to keep in mind as we determine whether or not something is useful for our witness is that it is it an authentic witness? That is to say, does it do real business with you and me first? Because if we don't believe it, if it isn't at the very core of our heart, who we are as believers, it will ring false in the ears of anyone who hears it. Our witness must be consistent first with the scriptures, then with the traditions of the church as they've been handed to us, and it must be a spirit-filled witness that is genuine and sincere. It may not be eloquent, it may not be profound, it may be as simple as sharing Jesus loves me with someone else. Because the Holy Spirit can work in and through that. The Holy Spirit has been at work since the beginning of the church and his work continues to this day. And so like our brother Paul, we use the gifts we have been given we give witness to the good news of Jesus Christ as laid out in the Gospels. We share the worship of the church as it has been worshiping for over 2,000 years. And we proclaim a word of salvation and life that we believe with every fiber of our being. And as we do that, the church will indeed be blessed and will grow and mature. I hope and pray that you have the opportunity to share your faith with those around you. It is a challenging time for everyone, and in challenging times, people often reflect and reconsider their lives, and it may be the time to give that kind of witness to someone who has perhaps strayed away from the church or never believed at all. We can see in this pandemic an opportunity to further spread the gospel and the good news. Because I believe there are open hearts and ears and minds to hear this good news. I pray you have a good rest of the day, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God be with you all. Goodbye now.